So think of space like a bit of paper. If you bend it with loads of matter, if you bent the, the other side over like that, and then you poked a tunnel between those two parts, you have a shortcut from, from, from one side to the other. To, to end off, you know, um, some people speak with confidence because they have multiple uh, PhDs or they, they've studied things on a daily basis like yourself. And other people speak with confidence because they've watched the movie Interstellar, like myself. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by this movie, as, as I'm sure, you know, millions of other people are. And, and I wanted to ask you a few questions based on the the astrophysics and dive into yeah. some of the aspects of that movie. So, the the wormhole, like the one depicted in Interstellar. Could mm -hmm. could that exist based on the laws of physics that we currently understand? And if it can exist, what's required to create one? What would, what would have to happen? So the, I think the idea is that they, you know, they, they if I'm right, they come close to this this kind of black hole, and time passes at a different rate when they get close to it. And if they go in past a certain point, twenty five years has gone past, and they come back to Earth, and all their yeah, they go they, they go down uh, to visit a planet that is close to a black mm -hmm. hole, which forces them to experience uh, like the I forget what they call it, the time shift or or uh, time lapse, but essentially yeah every hour is seven years back on the ship and back on earth so that's the the time shift the the wormhole is the you know spoiler alert the future humans open up a wormhole by saturn and it just appears and then people watching the sky notice this irregularity and it, it's a wormhole that we can travel to it's like the first step in the journey to get to the other point in the universe so so that's the the wormhole versus later in the movie when they travel to a planet that's close to the black hole that causes the the time warp yeah so i think they um if i recall they had a consultant physicist who's part of the team his name is kip thorne yes, and he, yeah he was another famous theoretical physicist and he was i think the physics consultant for this film and they tried to stay roughly within scientific boundaries, but you have to make it a bit more exciting than the laws of, than you know, the following exactly what would happen, just to make the film a bit more appealing. And it's, I think it's funny to think about. You have to make things lot. more exciting than the greatest mysteries of the universe in order to get, <laughs> in order to get human beings to watch it. You can't just show them things that are just completely mind melting. You have to put a story to it. I think there was a lot of a lot of shots they did in the film that they they worked carefully they worked hard to make them as scientifically accurate as possible and uh, we you know with a bit of extra color and a bit of extra contrast on it but in terms of time passing at a different rate time certainly does pass at a different rate when you get that close to a to a black hole or a wormhole so in theory the concept is valid uh it's been extrapolated a bit and i think if any of these planets were that close to a to a black hole the gravitational forces would have probably ripped the planets apart to get a time dilation of time that, dilation yeah. of such a long time uh you need you need to have the you need to have the planet so close to the black hole that it'd be traveling at a, a decent fraction of the speed of light and at that high speed the planet would be accelerating so much in a circle that all the water would be ripped off it you get a you wouldn't just get a wave the entire planet might be torn apart so you landing a spaceship on the water and picking up people would be very very difficult indeed so there's there's there is some grounding in physics and i'm pleased that they had a consultant physicist on it and kip thorne is you know one of the world's leading theoretical physicists and having him putting input into a film you know probably made it an easier job for for christopher nolan or whoever the uh, director mm. was so yeah, it's great nolan. that there is a grounding in physics it's a bit of an extrapolation so not quite consistent with what you actually measure but it's got the right ideas, you know, it teaches, it teaches the audience about these things in the right way. So once they've watched the film, they can say, oh, hey, when you when you get too close to a, a black hole, time time passes at a different rate. That's good. You're, you're teaching the masses, you know, uh, theoretical physics through a, an, an absorbing and engaging film. So that's a good thing. So <laughs> I, I know that we've photographed pictures of black holes, like the one in the center of the Milky Way. Have we ever photographed a wormhole? Like, is that something that we know exists or is that just a theory at this point? 
it's it's science fiction and i think it will remain science fiction forevermore the wormhole is the idea that you can join together a black hole in this part of space and some other black hole in some other distant part of space or a white hole and so when you jump into the black hole in one place you pop out on the other place and it's a science fiction theory um to do with the bending of what's called the bending of space time so think of space like a bit of paper if you bend it with loads of matter if you bend the, the other side over like that and then you poked a tunnel between those two parts you have a shortcut from 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 one side to the other um you would never be able to test that because to send somebody through the wormhole you'd lose radio communication with them as soon as they went inside the event horizon because the radio waves wouldn't be able to escape and so you wouldn't be able to you'd never know whether they got to the other side or not or indeed if there was another side i don't think wormholes are likely to be uh to be, to be real sadly i'd love them to be and i'm, I'm a huge kind of sci-fi fan and uh, you know, wormholes have been so crucial in so many great series, particularly some of the older, older Star Trek seasons. I'm probably yeah. leaning more towards being a, being a Trekkie than a Star Wars fan. They're both amazing, but I like some of the uh, the classics. So um, if wormholes existed, they wouldn't be two way. They're just one way, you can't go back. You lose communication. Yeah, they would. They wouldn't be. They wouldn't be. I don't think there's any such thing as a wormhole. They're just, they're just black holes. I think there's, there's no, no exit ramp. Loop back around. Take no, it's no exit ramp. It's a. It's, it's a. It's a. It's a funnel. It's like a waterfall going over. There's no way back up the waterfall. There's no waterfall that lifts you up the other way on the other side. Once you've gone in, that's it. You're a. You're a goner, I think. Do you remember the Tesseract scene with the libraries and Matthew McConaughey? And he's basically going through all these moments of time where his daughter's in the library. And the the signals with the sand yeah. falling from the ceiling, his daughter realizes that that was her father making those symbols or making those yes. signs. So in the movie, the future version of humanity has mastered the five dimensions, essentially the three dimensions, like up, down, left, right, like in, in the physical reality we know, we've mastered that today, but... The, the the interstellar future humans can use gravity and time and travel time like we travel in physical spaces. So if we master the, the, the fourth and fifth dimensions of being able to use gravity and time and, and control time and use gravity to send messages across time, is it theoretically possible that we could travel across moments like Matthew McConaughey does in the Tesseract library grid scene. In in theory, if you could traverse an extra dimension, it might be that you could look at different scenarios. And this comes back to what we were discussing about parallel universes, right? Different decisions produce different universes. So if there is a higher dimension, and I'm not sure we, how we would test for one, but if there was a higher dimension then, and we, we learned how to use it, Perhaps some new feature erupts in the quantum mechanical world that hints at some extra dimension, or maybe we solve string theory, and string theory requires a higher number of dimensions. Maybe one of these extra dimensions can be used to look at different scenarios and different evolutions of our of our planet and our universe. That be, would be an amazing thing to think about, but I think that will remain science fiction for yeah. many years yet. Yeah.